Shalom. Blessings, everyone. Praise the Lord. Thank him. Bless his name. He is worthy. Worthy to be praised. All of the glory and honor belongs to him. Today, I have a word to share for all of us, each and every one of us. This word is declutter. Declutter, the definition of declutter is to remove unnecessary items from an untidy or un or overcrowded place. Colossians 3, 2 says, and this is the Amplified Bible version, set your mind and keep focus habitually on the things above the heavenly things, not on the things that are on the earth, which have only temperament, temporal value. Amen. Hallelujah. To the word of the Lord, we have to get rid of everything that is preventing us from having a close walk with the Lord. Anything that keeps us, prevents us from seeking the things of the Most High. That's what has to be decluttered. Um, and it could be people too. It could be certain people because we have to be separated. That's what the Bible says. Um, we do have to be separated from dark things. You know, that's what come from among them is we have to reevaluate our life, reevaluate, examine our house, get things in order. And a way of doing that is decluttering. I'm going to read a scripture. With some scriptures. Mark 10, 17, 27. I'm going to read the Mark 10, 17 through 27. I'm going to read the amplified version of the Bible. It's the rich young ruler. As he was leaving on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, you are essentially good and morally perfect. What shall I do to inherit eternal life that is eternal salvation in the Messiah's kingdom? Jesus said to him, no one is essentially good by nature except the most high God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not testify falsely. Do not defraud. Honor your mother and father. And he replied to him, Teacher, I have carefully kept all these commandments since my youth. Looking at him, Yahshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, felt a love, high regard, compassion for him. And he said to him, You lack one thing. Go and sell all your property and give the money to the poor. And you will have abundant treasure in heaven. And come follow me becoming my disciple, believing and trusting in me, and walking the same path of life that I walk. But the man was saddened at Jesus' word, and he left grieving because he owned much property and had many possessions, which he treasured more than his relationship with God. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How difficult it will be for those who are wealthy and cling to possessions and status and security to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed and bewildered by his words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how difficult it is for those who place their hope and confidence in riches to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man who places his faith in wealth or status to enter the kingdom of God. They were completely, utterly astonished and said to him, then who can be saved from the wrath of God? Looking at them, Jesus said, with people as far as it depends on them, it is an impossible, but not with God, for all things are 
possible with God. There are footnotes, and I'm going to put the footnotes in the descriptions. So that's um, that sums it up right there. Basically, we have to be willing to put everything, 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 you know, that is a hindrance, everything that is blocking our relationships. Um, be willing to, like Jesus said, be willing to seal everything that we have if he tells us to if that's what it takes for us to follow him anything that is causing us to have a distraction with our relationship with him we need to to nip it in the bud as soon as possible so um i pray that this blesses someone and i'm gonna add some other um scriptures to it, to it. Um, actually, let me read another one. I'm gonna read another one. Okay, I'm going to read Luke. Um, Luke 12, 15 to 21, the Amplified Bible version. Then he said to them, watch out and guard yourselves against every form of greed. For not even when one has an overflowing abundance does his life consist of nor is it derived from his possessions when I, I look at that verse right now what I get from it what came to me is how we'll have probably 10 pair of shoes and go out and buy another pair of shoes and we have neighbors that need shoes and we don't even see if someone else would like the like a pair of shoes we are responsible for loving our neighbors as ourselves i look at that as being greedy um i i that's my definition of it having too much of something is greedy is greed i the bible says love the lord with all your heart all your soul all your might and love your neighbor as yourself and that's a commandment those are commandments that we have to do that we have to follow. And if we can't love our neighbor by sharing or or helping them, it could be um, shoes. It could be, I mean, there's many different things that you that we all could do to help our neighbors. But if we have a, a overabundance of anything, we should be able to give. It shouldn't be we have just so much stuff. We can't take those things with us. Uh, I'm going to continue. I'm on verse 16, parable of the wealthy fool. Then he told them a parable saying, there was a rich man whose land was very fertile and productive. And he began thinking to himself, what should I do since I have no place large enough in which to store my crops? Then he said, this is what I will do. I will tear down my storehouses and build larger ones. And I will store all my grain and my goods there. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have many good things stored up, enough for many years. Rest and relax, eat, drink, and be merry. Celebrate continually. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your soul is required of you. And now who will own all the things you have prepared? So it is for the one who continues to store up and hoard possessions for himself. And it is not rich in his relationship toward God. So that's, that's another thing. The last verse says, so it is for the one who continues to store up and hoard possessions for himself and not rich in his relationship toward God. That's the most important thing is our relationship with the most high God. We should be storing things for heaven, working on our relationship 
with the Lord. Not letting it everything or anything get in the way of that. That was Luke 15, Luke 12, 15 to 21, the amplified version. Then I'm going to read Matthew 6, 19 through 21. It says, do not store up for yourselves material treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break and, and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there is your heart. There your heart, your wishes, your desires, that on which your life centers will be also. I... I'm so familiar with with losing things and uh, starting over, different things getting taken away from me. And the Lord had taught me, um, and I give him the glory, he taught me at a young age to not depend on things, not look at how much I have or not be so focused on keeping, treasuring things like treasuring clothes treasuring shoes treasuring material material possessions it happened me losing them and happened to me at a very young age from moving a lot and when I got older it was it was at a point where in my life where I wanted certain things and I would buy d different things for myself but every time I would get things accumulated I would end up losing all those things. It just happened that way over and over and over again. And that's one of the reasons I can say is because I didn't I didn't follow you know where was my treasure at. I didn't follow the things of God like that. I didn't look at my material possessions is is something that I didn't have. I looked at certain things as I had to have this. I had to have that, but really I didn't. And then the Lord continuously took it away from me. For years he had did that. And then I learned like those things don't even matter. And I'm um, like where I live at now, before I, I lived here, I had only took the day that I moved in here, I only took a few items like clothes, and um, a coat. I had my coat. It was in the winter time. And I went back and got a few more things. And it was a whole lot of things left in, in, in where I lived at before. And the, um, the, the people who I rented the place from wouldn't allow me to go in and get my things. And I was going to take them to court because they didn't have any a right to do that but the lord told me to to let it go